In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how you can use WebSockets to build an interactive web application. I'm going to walk you through the process of creating a simple application that sends messages back and forth between a browser and a server. On the front end, I'm going to use Angular to create a single page application that's going to run in the browser. And on the back end, I'm going to use Spring Boot to create a server application. And then I'm going to integrate the WebSocket libraries that will facilitate the communication between the front end and the back end. So let's define some concepts that we'll be seeing frequently in this video. First is WebSocket. So WebSocket is a protocol that enables web applications to maintain bi-directional communications with server-side processes. However, it is not supported by older browsers. SockJS is a JavaScript library for low latency cross-browser communication, and it supports older browsers. So you can think of it as bridging the gap. So whatever WebSocket is not able to do, SockJS can bridge the gap. Next is STOMP. STOMP is an acronym that stands for Simple Text Orientated Messaging Protocol. In a nutshell, it provides the ability to interact with a message broker. And a message broker is something that allows or facil facilitates the movement of messages between uh, the various consumers or the, the various players in this WebSocket uh, ecosystem. All right, let's have a look at the backend code in Spring Boot. This is a configuration class. As you can see at the top, we have this enable WebSocket message broker annotation. What that does is that it enables a WebSocket message uh, handling backed by a message broker. And as I mentioned before, the message broker just facilitates the movement of messages between the client and the server. Also, what you want to uh, notice here is we have this WebSocket message broker configure, and we are overriding some two methods from there. First method on overriding is a configure message broker. And here we are setting this destination prefix. So any messages that are going out or back to the client should have this prefix of slash topic. Similarly, any messages coming into this back end uh, in Spring Boot must be prefixed. The path must be prefixed with this slash app. And I'll show you in the, in the next uh, class what that means. The next we're overriding this register stomp endpoints. And here we're just creating an endpoint slash WS so when the client connects, it's going to connect to this endpoint. And then that's, that's the way to be able to start sending messages. Also, we are adding the client's domain name here because this is cross domain. This server is going to be running on localhost and a different port. The front end of the client is running on localhost 4200. So we'll have to make sure that we set this here so that they're able to communicate with, with, it, with each other across those two domains. All right, so let's look at the controller class. So this is similar to almost like the rest controller uh, but there's some minor changes here so we have uh, the add controller annotation and then we have the add message mapping what this says is that when the client sends a message to this path then we want this function to be triggered so that's what add message mapping does and then add send to just says when this is done executing this method so we see here we make it sleep for two, two seconds to simulate some type of long running transaction or request and then we send back a response so when this response is sent back, it's going to be sent back to this address or to this topic. And as you can see here, this topic matches what's in the configuration here. And then this app, you're not seeing it in this controller, but on the front end, when they send a message, they'll have to prefix it with slash app slash greet for this to be triggered. On the front end, we'll have just a simple setup. We'll have a connect button, a disconnect button, then a, a, a way to send the message. So when you click on the connect button, it's going to do this to connect the WebSocket endpoint. And remember, that's going to be running on localhost on this port. And then if you recall, we had set slash WS as an endpoint in Spring Boot. So when you click connect, it's going to start listening at this endpoint. And then when you disconnect, it's going to just disconnect that uh, connection. Now, if you come here to the send, we see that we're actually, oh, let me scroll back up and mention something else. So we're connecting to the endpoint and then we're subscribing to the topic. And our topic was slash topic slash greeting. Again, we specified this in Spring Boot as well on the back end. So these have to match. If whatever we match, whatever you have on the front end here has to match what's on the back end. So when you subscribe to a topic, that just means that both the front end and the back end are going to be listening or interacting with that same topic. So when I send a message from the front end, and place on this topic, the back end is going to receive it. And then when the back end is done processing the message, it's going to place it back to this topic and the front end will receive it. So that's what subscribing means. And that's why these two have to match. So like slash topic and greetings has to match what's on the back end, which is what I'd shown earlier. 
All right, so that's done. And then on the send, we're just sending to the actual endpoint. And again, notice the prefix we specified on the back end slash app is here as well. So we'll have to send that message to slash app slash greet. And then that would be picked up by the controller and the message or the function will be triggered and it will sleep for two seconds and then send back a response back to the front end. And when the response is received, we are going to display it in the front end. Okay, let me go ahead and run this. First thing I want to do is start up the front end and since I'm using Angular and for doing that, and it's going to start up the application on my local host at port 4200. So this looks like it compiled successfully. And if I go in the browser to localhost at 4200, you can see it's up and running. So this is what the UI looks like. Next, I'm going to start up the backend, which is just a Spring Boot application. So I'm going to do, uh, let's say run. So it started as well, and it's running on port 5555. And now if I go to the front end, first thing I want to do, let me inspect the element of the console. If I try and type in my name here, nothing's going to happen because we're not connected yet. So the first thing I want to do is connect and now I'm up and running. And so if I come and say, hello, code 215, click send, it shows up here, hello, code 215 pretty straightforward. And if I go to the network, we can see all these calls are happening. So it called the web socket and you can see here what is going on. And then we have a web socket here as well. And you can see the request and the response. In summary, I wanted to highlight one of the strong points of using web socket. So notice in no moment in time, when I send this message, did I have to refresh this browser page? And that shows you that you can use this web socket in scenarios where you want to receive messages without actually refreshing your page. And this can be useful, for example, in collaborative scenarios where you have multiple people working on pretty much the same thing and you want those changes to be reflected in real time as they happen.